Hi, today I'm going to talk about how to laser engrave these personalized Fortnite water bottles. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And my project for today are these personalized water bottles with the llama from Fortnite on it. Now, if you have access to a laser cutter like I do through my local makerspace, it probably has a rotary attachment. And if you take a special class, they'll teach you how to install that attachment and how to use it. I just took that class myself recently, and I am really excited with the results that I, I got here. Um, these are powder-coated stainless steel water bottles I bought for about $18 a piece on Amazon. And when you engrave away the powder coating, you have this wonderful stainless steel image that appears. So um, I'm going to talk in this episode a little bit about how to prepare images so that they turn out really well in this rotary environment. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the rotary attachment and how to use it. What you need for a good engraving is a good black and white image. And you can do a Google search and use the tools to just look for black and white. But they tend, these llamas are very simple and I want something a little more interesting than that. So I'm going to have to make it myself. So I look around for the best full color image I can find and I download that to my computer and I pull it into Photoshop. Photoshop has a lot of filters and one I like to use is called Find Edges. And it turns it into a line drawing, but some of the lines are not black, so I have to go into adjustments and pick black and white, and it turns it all into shades of gray. But I still need to clean it up, so I use the magic wand, and I select some of the gray in the background, and I make a new solid color fill layer that I'm going to fill with white to make that gray go away. Now I want to make the black blacker, so I'm going to select the white, I have to unlock that layer so I can select it. I select the white, and now I do the inverse, which is selecting everything else, and I do a second fill layer, solid color, that I'm going to fill with black. I tighten my selection a little by contracting it by one pixel, and then I create my fill layer, and I select black. And this gives me a better black and white image. I'm now going to turn that image into a vector drawing by pulling it into Adobe Illustrator and placing it in a new blank document. I've shown this image trace process in a lot of prior videos, and usually it's enough to just say image, trace, make, and expand, and you get a good enough result. But if you really want to refine what you get, you should open the image trace window and play with these sliders that really uh, can help you refine the image to get exactly what you want. It's always a good idea to check the ignore white box under options because that prevents you from getting duplicate lines. But if you forget to do that, you can always go back later, say ungroup, you can see that there's some white pieces over in the drop down list. Use the magic wand, you select the white, and you delete it. And now the white background will be gone as well as some of the white inside the figure. And then you should just, once again, use your selection tool to select all of the parts. Then right click and group them and now you have the image you're going to be working with. I create a new drawing that's exactly the size of the engraving I want to do. This is 100 millimeters by 80 millimeters. I size it, I place it where I want it, and then I start to add the text. You can open the character window, pick a font, one that looks good with uh, Fortnite in this case, and size it so that uh, it looks exactly the way you want it. And then the very last thing you do is go to Type, Create Outlines, and that turns it from a font into a drawing. Now let's take a quick look at the rotary attachment. Its job is to hold your bottle level and to ro slowly rotate it while the engraving is done. On the right hand side are the active rollers that are rolling the bottle. On the left hand side there are passive rollers that can slide back and forth along this bar to adjust for the length of your bottle. The active rollers get their instructions by plugging into the place where the gantry is normally plugged in. The gantry is the arm that moves the laser head forward and backwards in the Y dimension. Those Y-dimension instructions will now be going to the rollers. 
To install the rotary attachment, you have to pull out the metal waffle bed that's normally there, and we have a line engraved in the very bottom that shows you how to line up the attachment. The other thing you have to do is really slow down the speed in the wide dimension because your bottle can slip on these rollers if it's moving too fast. I use Adobe Illustrator as my CAD program, my computer-aided design, but the CAM program, the computer-aided manufacturing, is RDWorks. I use RDWorks to update the firmware on the laser cutter to tell it that the rotary attachment is installed and I have to write that new instruction to the laser cutter. When I uninstall the rotary attachment, when I'm finished, I'll have to go back and do this in reverse and set rotating once again to no. I import my Illustrator drawing I want to make sure that the reference point is in the center of the design instead of one of the corners, and I can do that by going to the, into the settings and picking it. I need to rotate it 90 degrees so that it's lined up just the way you saw on the bottle because that's the way it's going to engrave. And then for my settings, I had 50% power and 325 millimeters per second for the speed. And then one thing I learned the hard way is that all the check marks should be off, including this one that says independent output. If you don't do that, you'll get a mistake like I got here, where it decided for efficiency to do the first five letters with the llama, and then to zip back and get the IGH, and the bottle rolled and the alignment was off. Because the gantry has been disabled, before you begin, you have to manually move the arm over the center of the bottle. If you have the framing function, be sure to use it so you can test to make sure that the vertical alignment is exactly where you want it. This is my first project using the rotary attachment and I just love it. I'm already thinking of new ways to use it. These were big hits as Christmas presents. I have lots of other projects for gaming and gamers, so if you're interested, please subscribe to my channel.